So chapter three, um, chapter three of your book covers data communications and protocols. This is this chapter is a little little bit longer. Uh, let's see, starts on page twenty five of your textbook, and we are going to. Oh my goodness, covers quite a bit quite a bit of information. Chapter three actually goes to. 120. So it's actually a very long, uh, long chapter. But there's a lot of information in here, and there's information in here um, that's vital to your to your understanding because um, it goes back to the technical basics um, of understanding telecommunications, understanding the internet process, uh, and and the protocols that we have to use. Now, chapter two, we talked about the standards, and we introduced those protocols a little bit. And so now we're going to expand on that and develop uh, what we need to know as far as applying those standards to each of these protocols so that we understand better how information is handled, how it's processed, how it's rejected by the Internet. So um, in, in looking at this, we, we start off by looking at data communications systems and functions. Um, the science of communications, and um, that goes back to the very basics of understanding what goes on from the sender to the medium to the receiver. Um, these are your, uh, your your very basics of communication, and then understanding it as it applies to data networks. So they give you a little model here, you know, in terms of the application integrity, the message integrity. Network integrity, data integrity, bit level integrity. And so if you think about this in terms of the basics of communication, um, it all makes sense. You cannot have communications without the integrity in each of the points along the communications uh, process. Your text <coughs> excuse me, goes back and gives you a quick review of binary and and as you know and you, you understand by now that binary is again since we talked about what goes on on the ethernet what goes on on your ethernet cable you know that's layer one of your OSI model um, it's all ones and zeros on and off highs and lows so you have to understand how the information is sent down the soda straw so that it's received as it's sent across the internet especially on the physical layer once we get to the higher layers and we've got information passing um, in parallel um, things are, are a little bit differently because we can have things set eight digits at a time 16 at a time uh, and and larger you know up to 32 and 64 today you know and, and in some cases larger than that so we go back and we go back and review your understanding of, of binary uh, and a view of the uh, the characteristics. Your text even talks about on page 32 the uh, characteristics of ASCII and decimal values. ASCII, of course, is what what you've got going on right here on your keyboard. So we need to understand and review a little bit of the ASCII. Page 35 hits the network. You can see the little diagram at the bottom of the Gozindas and the Gozadas. You know, on your network, you know, understanding what happens once data leaves your keyboard, leaves your computer, and goes out over the Internet. How is it handled? How is it moved about across the Internet and around the world? Um, your, your text goes into, again, a review on 37 for some additional terms. Some, some things that you probably don't use daily, but having a little bit of understanding of DTE and DCE, these are terms that, that are really, really fundamental um, to passing things, especially from the days of the computer and the modem, as you can see in the bottom of the page here where we talk about DTE and DCE. Um, network transport, many flavors of network transport. Your, your book talks about LAN, MAN, WAN, uh, FIDI different types. Go back and uh, make sure you understand the difference in those uh, different um, transport mechanisms because they are fundamental. The uh, transport channels, your text talks about, you know, the things that go on in terms of noise, delay, and jitter, you know, 
you experience this stuff all the time on on your your internet and on your phone. You probably don't even think about you know what's going on there. Why is your computer buffering on the internet? Well, this talks about what's going on on that transport um, channel. Analog versus digital, um, getting a, a sense a sense of what goes on in the analog world versus the digital world, where we're talking about sinusoids and things that occur in, along those sinusoids, things that would happen with AM and FM, you know, as it applies to communications, uh, different types of uh, uh, modulation. Take a look at that. On page uh, 44 and 45, they go back and talk about amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Again, terms and concepts that you should have gotten early on in your uh, lower level classes. Phase modulation. Phase modulation, you know, another way of coding and decoding signals. Um, digital signaling, very important. Uh, think in terms of your, uh, your music. Music is all digitized, so understanding the digital aspects uh, becomes very important. I'm moving along pretty quick here because I want to keep these videos short because they're they're just kind of to get you going. I want you to get into the book and get out there and do your internet um, searches. So your text talks about those types of things. Uh, page 54, the internet. What is it? Where did it come from? You know, the internet has a long history that goes back to the Department of Defense and the major universities and those functions in between of passing information from coast to coast, much less around the world. So your text talks a little bit about that on the World Wide Web. Um, there's an internet timeline that goes through and gives you an idea of what goes on. You know, nothing you have to study, but something that you should have an understanding of so that you have a familiarity of where it started way back in the 1960s, back when I was a kid, nine years old. Uh, to today. So take a look at that. Um, gain a sense of, of what the information is telling you. Um, your open system model, the OSI model, go back and review your OSI model and understanding what happens at the lowest level, the, 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 uh, the physical layer, and then all the way up to the applications layer and back down again. Willie Sutton story, kind of a cute story there, understand that goes back to the model. You can see here how the model has changed uh, over time. Your text on 67 goes through a layer by layer. So in the next few pages, starting at page 69, we look at layer 7, application, layer 6, presentation, uh, layer 6, kind of a long explanation there. It goes on. Uh, what's understa Understanding what's going on with uh, imagery, very important, especially today. The internet didn't start off with all this great fluff and imagery, so we get a look at it there. So your text goes through um, each of the layers, session layer, five, transport layer. How that's, Those are your management layers. What's going on on the internet? Who gets to talk what, when, how long? Uh, get it, getting back to a sense of those layer understandings. The difference between switching and routing, packet switching, um, connectionless networks you know what type of network is a connectionless network um, that you can send information back and forth without a connection your network layer layer three what goes on this is pretty much in-house before it hits the internet routing decisions and routing protocols um, distributed routing protocols congestion controls how do we handle how does the system handle what goes on when there's too much information I'm sure you've heard these things where denial of service happens. You know, how does a network try to get around when you have a culprit out there, somebody mischievous, tries trying to deny service on the uh, on the internet? Email messaging, the data link layer on page 110, and then the physical layer. People don't understand the physical layer. Very very important down on the wire. Most of the problems that occur on a network happen on the physical layer. First place you always check if you're having problems, make sure that your cables are good because typically that's where the problem is. You've got a bad connection and therefore the information is not even hitting the internet, much less going out. So chapter three, um, you've got a ton of information here that talks about, again, the basics of what goes on on telecommunications. 
spend some time going back, review those fundamentals. Like I said, you got about 100 pages here to read, go through, and get back up to speed on those fundamentals.